One of them goddamn songs I rapped on. Yeah, that. it is. Yes, it is. And talking yeah, big to it on TV on the, on the, on the stand. Yeah, now dang. I got the world hanging from my nuts. Yeah, <laughs> damn. Damn, it feels it's good to be a gay. Gay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like And I wrote Bushwick part on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Uh. Real gangsta ass niggas don't run from shit because real, real gangsta ass, ass niggas don't can't run, run fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's the one. All the way, bro. Damn, it feel good to be a guy. How we sound? Good. How we sound? Check one, two, test the mic. Mic check. We're gonna run this. Quiet on the set. <laughs> now you can let you can let that ride for a second though. Oh, this ain't in there. Joe, what we look like? Good. Rolling all around. New liquor lying out. We got everything. Y'all ready? You ready? Oh man, what? I'm ready. <laughs> what? Oh, okay, all right. Uh, uh, quiet on the set. We man. gotta interrupt this for a breaking news bulletin. Chico Bean. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna need your help on this one. Uh, go ahead. You because there is there is too much to say right now. The trap is being blessed by one of the forefathers, one, one of, of the, the godfathers. <laughs> if you ever liked the song out of the South. You know exactly who we have in the trap with us today. Listen, Los, I grew up in Washington, D.C., for those who don't know, but I grew up studying this man right here. Come on now. I mean, I've seen Scarface walking up and down Georgia Avenue in D.C. by himself, and it amazed me. And I'm like, where did this dude come from? And learning the rap a lot history, man. I'm talking about all the way down to, uh, man, it's just so much to say you can't even say it all. The founder of Rap A Lot Records. Yes, sir. You've heard his name in every song you ever liked, pretty much. Yep. Been putting it in the putting it down from Houston, Texas, since day one. One of the most respected men in period, not just in hip hop, in just business and music all around. Arthur. Yes, sir. Record label owner. Boxing promoter. Yep. Businessman. Yes, sir. Mogul. Yep. The legend himself, Jay Prince. Jay Prince. I gotta stand up. He ain't have to do it. He ain't even had to do it. Yeah. This is one of them ones where it ain't even nothing I want to say. It's so much I want to hear. Man, listen, I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> the best hey, goddamn man. introduction I had all day. Oh, Come on. man. Listen. Come on. Yeah. You just don't know, like, the work that you put in and how you inspired us, like, to, to model our business after your independence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Knowing where to draw the line and knowing where to negotiate and not negotiate. Yeah. Like, we followed you since we were kids and grew up on the ghetto boys. My dad had stomach cancer. They yeah. took out half his stomach. Mm. When he came out the operating room, first yeah. thing he wanted to hear was ghetto boys, my mind playing tricks on. That's, that's, that's the one right yeah. there. Oh my God. I mean, speaking of them stories, when I was young, God bless the dead, my cousin Dirk passed away. And I remember being a little boy and they had, you know, the, the repass and, and the song that they played at the repass was now the funeral is over Damn. and all the tears have dried up. Yeah. Niggas hanging deep in the cut, getting fired up, ready yeah. to pull a pistol on the nigga that shot my homie. Yeah. And now for an eye, so now your life is what you owe. I mean, Come just on. though yeah. that that infrastructure that y'all laid down, yeah. like, did you know the entire time that you was going to end up being what you ended up being? Not really. Not really. I be telling the goddamn life. I sit in and say I knew how it was going to end, but we was just keeping it real and authentic and organic, you know what I mean, along the journey. That was important to us. And one thing we always knew is real lasts forever. The lie got to keep changing. Mm. Yeah. Man. So 
I know you got the book, you know what I mean? And I got the audio. We both got the audio yeah. and the, the, the written part, but we're going to have to get you to sign one today. Hey, man, I brought a bunch of books for everybody that don't have one. See, man, that's... that's. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about it for a minute. The yeah. art and science of respect. Like, for the younger generation, what, what does that title mean when, when they hear that? Yeah, well, I decided to name that book The Art and Science of Respect because I wanted... Uh, like, a lot of people want your glory without knowing your story. So, you know, I uh, decided to name it the art and science of respect because it was an art and a science to the things I've done. A lot of people say you're lucky, you know what I mean? And y'all know, like I know, you, you ain't where you are based on luck. You know, exactly. either you fail a plan or plan to fail. And uh, it was an art and science of uh, respect with everything that, you know, I accomplished, you know, with structure. and. Uh, the artistic part was the creative visions and dreams I had before they came into fruition. And the science was how to accomplish those things. You know what I mean? So I, that's why I named it that. Right. Yeah. And in the book you talk, one of the parts that uh, really stood out to me was when you talked about the loss of your sister. Yeah. And, uh, you know, being as though we, a lot of us come from environments where we lose a lot of important people in our lives, like how was you able to you know, not just deal with it, but let it motivate you moving forward to become what you ended up becoming, because that can break a lot of us down, and it does in most cases. Yeah, uh, with the help of uh, my grandmother, we all have one. Yeah. You know, she uh, was real instrumental in that situation. Of course, you know, that story I wrote in that book, my last night with my sister, she and I were sitting up late, you know what I mean, way past bedtime, talking about what we wanted to become in life and what we wanted to give my mother. And uh, her dream was to buy my mother a vacuum cleaner. My dream was to buy my mother a house. And, uh, you know, that, that night was the last night I saw her alive. That uh, next day she got cut in half by a train. And uh, I was left with having to buy the vacuum cleaner in the house. And you did both I fulfilled of them. that. Man, yeah. I want to ask you this, because you pretty much saw hip-hop from the beginning all the way up until right now and everything in between. Where do you see it going at this moment? You know, I think, uh, I think hip-hop is evolving. You know, I, uh, I'm not one to hate on what the youngsters is doing right now. You know what I mean? I think uh, they are evolving, and I love the movement that's taking place, you know. Uh, I think it's some things that we dealing with right now and they dealing with that, uh, you know, they need to put more protection on their ass, you know what I mean? Not campaign so much because election day going to come when you campaign, whether it's good or bad, you're going to reap what you sow. And uh, you can't change election day, you know, at the, right at that moment. Mm. So, you know, I, I, I tell them everywhere I go, embrace your OG over IG, somebody to share some wisdom with you to, uh, you know, teach you some things on how to live. And I think a lot of that gets lost in translation because y'all laid that game down over the years. Like, damn it feel good to be a gangster. Yeah. Damn it feel good to be a gangster. A real gangster ass nigga play his cards right. Real gangster ass nigga don't run his fucking mouth. Cause real yeah. gangster ass niggas don't start fights. Yeah. Niggas always trying to high cap, telling mm. all their friends how they shot them. Yeah. Real gangster ass niggas don't flex nuts. Mm. Cause real gangster ass niggas know they got them. God damn. Now, God damn. that's the that, type of shit you that, can live off of. Right, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, but that's so different than yeah. what we see right now. Yeah. It's the complete opposite. Yeah. So with you being a legendary man that you are in this industry, what do you think that, that message was lost in translation? Well, you know, they didn't hear that message back then. And, and the message could be lost where our generations are concerned, you know what I mean? I, I'd be the first to take responsibility, and I do in my community and in my hood, you know what I mean? But I think as parents, you know, it's real important as parents that we put the real in our kids, because ain't nobody gonna do it the way we gonna do it, you know what I mean? So that has to happen, and so many people like are unfortunate to even get the real poured in them, you know what I mean? Normally somebody missing, one missing, a boat missing, and then you you know you come up with a whole different understanding on the principles and the values where life is concerned, and you know shit get.
kind of threw off, but I love them. I love that you know them goddamn lyrics. Like, oh, what? <laughs> Man, listen. <laughs> listen, I can, no. I can tell you, and then yeah. I, I got an unpopular opinion I think a lot of people have whenever I say this. I think Willie D had the best verse on Mines playing tricks on me. Yeah. Just because of what he was saying on there. Yeah. Make big money. Drive big cars. Hey, everybody, everybody know me. me. Yeah. It's like I'm a movie star, but yeah. late at night, yeah. something, something ain't, ain't right. right. I feel I'm getting tailed by the same sucker's headlights. Is it the fool that I ran off the block? Or is, or is it that, that nigga last week, week that I shot? shot. Yeah. Or is, is it the, the one, one I beat for $5,000? Yeah. He yeah. thought he had came, but it was gold, gold metal flower. It was yeah. probably one of them niggas, Willie. One of them. It was probably one of them. I reached under the seat and grabbed the pistol. I ain't no need to be lying. I was scared of it. I'm Motherfucker. Yeah. I made a left with the Popeyes pie and better die quick. quick. Mm. If it's going down, get the shit over with. Here they come. Just like I figured. I got my, my hand, hand on my motherfucking trick. Yeah. But what I saw make, make your ass, ass start giggling. giggling. Three blind, crippled, and crazy senior citizens. Yeah. I live by the swarm. I, I keep my boys everywhere I go because I'm paranoid. It's <laughs> like that. That yeah. right there, and then y'all was wrong for letting uh, Bushwick Bill rob kids for candy, man. Y'all should have done I was scared yeah. of Bushwick Bill, man. Every yeah. time I went trick or treat, and I had a kitchen knife just in case Bushwick Bill ran up on me. Yeah. It was one of the best videos of, yeah. of all time. Yeah. Huh? That is one of the best videos. Oh of all man, time. for real! Like, like, how much influence did you have on those lyrics? Because I know yeah. we know, you know, your background. And what yeah. you did and laid down in the streets of Houston prior to you, you know, becoming enlightening and going into business. Yeah. So how much of that was influenced by your real life? Yeah, I think a lot of it, even up to October the 31st, my birthday. Halloween. Born yeah. on Halloween? Yeah. yeah. I'm, the, I'm the treat, not the trick. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be said. Yeah. You yeah. dig it. Yeah. But definitely inspirational, you know. Uh, originally, that was going to be a Scarface song. And... Uh, you know, I heard it and I couldn't allow it to just be that. So we figured out how to branch it out to the whole crew and bam, the life changing for the South. Was that the was that like the the one that really kicked it off? For, yeah, for yeah, Life? yeah. That was that was the one like, you know, East Coast was monopolizing shit back then. You know, even in Houston, East Coast DJs. You know, they came down and just was, you know, handling us. And yeah, you had to run them out the city. Yeah, yeah, I had to figure out a way to do that. <laughs> and uh, from there, that song, you know, state by state, we had social media. So I traveled to state by state and kicked in the door. There was that song that they embraced, man. Mind playing tricks. Man, that's yeah. crazy. Damn. So you, you're definitely the OG that everybody calls when, when shit going good and when shit going bad. And it's like... <laughs> yeah. I see sometimes that they want you to embrace that role when you don't necessarily fuck with it. How you feel about when, when shit bad, people want you to do something about it all the time? Yeah, well, you know, I don't embrace every invitation that's given to me. Exactly. Because, you know, I just don't have nothing to do with it. But for my loved ones, for my friends, for people who I fuck with, then, you know, yeah, most of my fights is for them versus me. Yeah. So... When did you establish that role in your life? Like, you know what I mean? Because in the book, you, you give a lot of game about your background, but when did you become that person that people knew that they could depend on in those type of situations? When did you know you was that person? Uh, it began in the streets. You know what I mean? It began in the streets where, uh, you know, you have to prove yourself. You know, you know how that shit is. Yes, sir. You, even from walking to school, you know, you have to start uh, really letting one know that okay, you got muscles, but I got a brain. I know how to thank you. You know what I mean? So I had to figure out, being a little nigga, how to uh, <laughs> stop muscle from imposing their will on me when they felt like it was appropriate. And uh, yeah, so that just like bled over into the real world once I was able to conquer some shit. I agree, because them Texas niggas be big than the motherfucker. <laughs> you go to Texas, it's corn, it's big. corn big. You know what, so what, what kind of shit yeah. does the OG ride around listening to now? Like, I know you've always had the ear for the hot shit, yeah. but like, what type of shit can keep your interest at I, this day and age? I've been riding on this honeycomb brazen. Come like, on, honeycomb. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, what? Honeycomb? honeycomb? honeycomb yeah. Man, listen, yeah. man. Mobile, man. Anti yeah. shit pop off, they get to say my name and shit. Yeah. Like, honeycomb, honeycomb, <laughs> you the only one we can blame for this. I be yeah. on the trip, 
but I can't. The shit come with being a nigga for real. Yeah. Opposition, know how it bank. So they be sending a nigga. I go buy a honeycomb brazy. I get a nigga killed for shit. Uh, you know what I mean? That's know, how he, he literally know yeah. every yeah. 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 I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm autistic yeah. a little bit when it comes to that shit. <laughs> legal, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely fuck with honeycomb. That interview yeah. he did was crazy. Yeah, crazy. he got a very interesting story. Yeah. yeah. Is that why you, in, is that how he came into your knowledge? Oh, my son, on. my son, Jay Prince Jr., embraced him. Shout out to him. He be finding all the dope money. Yeah, right? yeah, jazz. Yeah. Jazz, yeah. jazz got Drake and then Jay yeah. Prince. These niggas. Yeah. Well, both of them. They both get some props. They, yeah. they got an ear for this real. shit. They come from my nut bags. So. <laughs> 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 Beautiful people. That's the new name for my shit now. I just mix, what's up with this nut bag? Yeah, yeah brother. I had the opportunity to meet your, uh, I think it's your oldest son, uh, Mike. Oh, that's my cousin. Oh, Mike Prince yeah, is your yeah. cousin? Yeah, oh, that's okay. my cousin. Okay, yeah. well, he told me a story about uh, when they was young. You know, I, one of my favorite things to do when I come to Houston is ride the loop. Yeah. Just ride around, you know yeah. what I mean? And uh, he said that you guys used to ride around, you'd get in the car with you, and you just ride around yeah. that loop, man. So, you know, the city of Houston is, is beautiful, man. I love going down there. It's one of my favorite places. It's, I always say it's the only place I live other than where I've lived already. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you think the city of Houston goes in the pantheon of hip-hop cities? Yeah, well, uh, the city of Houston, that's where I'm from, and I laid the foundation uh, part of where the whole South stand, you know what I mean, right there in the city of Houston. You know, that was the uh, place, the blueprint, was laid where independent record labels begun. Not uh, the production deals and different things that they was getting on the East Coast. You know, that shit happened right there in Houston first where I created the blueprint where Master P, Cash Money, Tony Draper, you know, all the homies uh, implemented. So, yeah, it's, it's that special. Yeah, man, that's yeah. Special. Now, how do you, you know, you just named all those people, man, you know, hate is something that is prevalent, unfortunately, in what we do. So how, you know, what advice could you give people for not being a hater? Because you had all these guys that came up that had these big old empires after you, but they were motivated by you, and you still embraced them. You could have been like, man, fuck y'all, y'all taking yeah. my blueprint. <laughs> exactly. Never, you know what yeah. I mean? You never did that. So what <clears throat> kept you from being that type of person? Well, I think what kept me is understanding the power of hate. You know what I mean? Understanding that you know, that shit is like moment mentality. You know, I've always been about a movement, so my whole objective was to inspire, you know what I mean, other homies from every state, every city, because I wanted to create a, a movement to compete with the majors, you know what I mean? So I wanted to breed the realness and the truth in these dudes so we could unite, you know what I mean? My objective was always about uniting power versus you know, looking at somebody and malice and jealousy coming out of my heart, that's cancer. Mm. That'll kill a nigga. <laughs> you always preach about independence. You've been saying it since shit long as I remember. Like, how does it feel like preaching the independence to the masses and only certain people picking up and hearing what you're saying or picking up what you're putting down? Well, it feels good for, for those who have the capacity to embrace Realness, you know, I understand that a, a fool despises wisdom, so I don't expect, you know what I mean, the ones that hate it, then I say, oh, you're a fool, you know what I mean? So we have to understand that fools, you know, is amongst the land of the living with us. It's just important to be able to, like, recognize them and put them on the shelf they, des they deserve to be on and keep the shit moving. Mm. So let me ask you a hypothetical, because I got to. So say the next Jay Prince might be watching this interview right now. What advice would you give him? Uh, I would give him the advice uh, to value his, uh, the chances and choices he get every day. You know what I mean? To, to value that and to, uh, to educate himself and not practice bad habits. You know what I mean? These bad habits and the lack of education is what keep us in bondage. So if I could do shit all over again, you know, me, myself, then first thing I would do is buy that art and science of respect. Mm. You know what I mean? And goddamn get some game because I, I used to hate reading. And now I understand the value of reading and, and, and sucking up game, you know what I mean, and wisdom and uh, executing it because it's one thing 
to make money, wisdom going to teach you how to keep it. So I want as much wisdom as I can get, you know, wrap the head around wisdom. So it's like everybody give you the respect and know that you the OG. Who are some of the OGs that you got some of that art and science of respect from? People that you looked up that were maybe ahead of you when you were starting out in the game. My mother and father to, to begin, you know what I mean? I think they were more valuable in my life than anybody. Right. You know what I mean? Because they told me the truth even when, when it wasn't popular and I didn't want to hear it. Because, you know what I mean, I, I was there. So I started there from there. You know, Larry Hoover, you know, Geronimo Pratt. You know, these guys are people I had opportunity to kick it with that, uh, you know, shared a lot of good game with me. Mm. <clears throat> you put game down for years, all them intros that you spoke on, like, and you always spoke on entities that, you, you know, bad can come when you, when you yeah, put that type of, yeah, when you put that type of truth out, like, yeah. what, you know, I know the story about, you know, the, 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 you know, situation you went through when they tried to get rid of you, but like, how do you still had the strength to say, you know what, I don't care, I'm still going to give my people what they need to know in regards to avoid these pitfalls and these traumas that I have been through. Yeah, the, the lack of uh, fear, the lack of, uh, like, like fear is something that I think the system bank on, you know, uh, putting in us to, uh, to paralyze us. And I never embraced that shit, you know what I mean? I, I always felt like, uh, you know, you have to be willing to die for something. You know what I mean? Are you gonna fall for anything? And certain things I was just willing to die for. And that, that was one of them when it came to like, you know, empowering my people and not disowning my people. You know, you, you can't take that from me. I'm willing to die for that. And, and also I believe if the creator be for me, the world could be against me and I'm gonna win. So it's that mentality that, you know, caused me to be like relentless about my stand and, and fearless where my stands was concerned. Yeah, it's not a lot of examples of that, you know, in the, in the black community, you know, that, that actually get to move about the industry and, and do and say that type of stuff. Yeah. Oh, man. Goodness gracious. <laughs> That's it's just, just it's, you know, I don't know if you know this, but I know, you know, you've been around a lot of different people, but, you know, for the, you know, guys that's, you know, in our generation that's a little bit younger, then, you know, uh, you know, the younger guys that's out now, we kind of in the middle. But, you know, I know growing up watching all of the stuff that y'all laid down, like I'm a big Pimp C fan. Like that's, you yeah. know, that dude is one of the only rappers that I ever looked up to. And being able to be around these people and knowing that your influence is what motivated them to be able to push forward. To be sitting here with you now is kind of like amazing that we've reached a point where you will be willing to come sit down with us, man. So. Shit is I, yeah. like, yo, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's crazy. Man. Yeah, like we hear we hear stories all the time, like like uh, you know the legendary going to the to the Bentley lot and, and with Pimp C and yeah. then, and picking out his first one. Yeah. Like just as hip hop fans, can we get a can we get a moment in that? Yeah, I mean Pimp Pimp was to me like the the Tupac of the South. Exactly. You know what I mean? He was a, he was a special dude, man. And uh, you know I remember. Uh, when he was on his way out from jail, the plans and the brainstorming, you know, that he and I would do over and over again because, you know, Pimp was like a victim of, of so many of us when we allowed different spirits to enter our body, not, not the wine or, right. or the loyalty, but other shit, you know what I mean? We can, like, allow different pills and different things or whatever it may be to enter our system, and then it got a mind of its own. Mm. So me and Pimp had opportunity to, uh, like, plan on preventing that certain one forever having an effect on his life ever again. And uh, I believe to this day that he kept his word, whatever's concerned. But, uh, you know, Pimp was a unique individual, man. I, I miss the homie. Yeah, he wasn't yeah. necessarily signing you. I remember uh, a DVD that was out that I had back in the day where y'all did an interview with uh, Sway. They was talking about how you got in your car, drove down, and met with him, and yeah. you know what I'm saying, and 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 just sat down in the in the living room with him and talked with him. So, how, like being as though you have so many relationships, 
what can you explain that where people don't necessarily have to make money off each other but still give each other game? How, to talk yeah. about the importance of that. Well, that's what happened with, with me, Pimp, and Bun B. You know, when I, <clears throat> when I heard him on the radio, I damn near burned my new Lexus up riding to Port Arthur because I wanted to be in business with him. I know what I heard. But when I got there, they were signed to Jive and different things like that. So what I done was, oh, y'all, y'all my neighbors, y'all the homies. I extended an invitation. If you have any problems, any situation where you need some wisdom or whatnot, call me. So that was the relationship that we had for years until Pimp got locked up. When Pimp got locked up, uh, Jai Records didn't want Bun B to make a living without Pimp. And that's why I intervened and, and like, uh, crashed that contract. And that's how I was able to sign Pimp and Bun B to solo contracts. You know what I mean? Because, you know, like they do, you know, they'll uh, try to put their foot on your neck if you allow it and you ain't got no fight in you. But we was able to break through that situation and bam, you know, they became my solo artist. Man. That's crazy. Like just having the fearlessness, like you said, to be able to go at it with these big record executives. And like, do you get that same level of respect in those rooms? Because we know what you are in our culture, but when you walk into them rooms with them music execs, do they look at you and give you that same level of... of, of well, you know, they do and they don't. If they don't, then I'm going to demand it. And a lot of times with those dudes, you have to get real creative. You know what I mean? Because, you know, I read this book called Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon Hill. Yeah, yeah. One of one of the things it explained to you in that book is how to use your power against powers, you know, of authority or whatnot. And when I was dealing with a lot of, you know, those executives, I had to figure out how to use my power that was in the street to balance shit. Because you have to understand, like when you're dealing with those guys, you're dealing with uh, people who have generations of wisdom. You know what I mean? When you come to the table. So the scale has to be balanced. You got to figure out how to balance that scale. If not, then, you know, you become their bait. So I figured out how to balance the scale. And where they made me uncomfortable, I made them uncomfortable. And we came together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, it's just the smoothness of the way. It don't matter what they do. You know they made me uncomfortable, so I made them uncomfortable. <laughs> Now would be a perfect time to tell him, man. Hey, man, welcome back, back to, to the 85, 85 South Show. Yeah. We are sitting in here chopping up game with one of the most respected men in the industry on earth. On earth. In our lifetime. For real. The real godfather of the game, Mr. J. Prince. Now, speaking of that, man, you have a, a, rep a reputation that precedes you, of course, but you know what I mean? It, a lot of it, you know, you hear people talking, they be like, man, that, that motherfucker, don't ever make that nigga upset. And something might happen to you. What did it, like, and every time I've seen people talk about you, they always talk about how nice of a guy you are. And yeah. So, how does, where did that come from? I can't imagine. <laughs> no, I'm, a, yeah, I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy, but, uh, um, you know, I will take a stand where the enemy is concerned, you know. Uh, I think a lot of times uh, those conversations come from people who didn't, didn't pack right or didn't do right uh, by me or by friends. And, you know, I, I'm a thinker. You know what I mean? I don't have a bunch of muscles. I'm a little guy. So I'm a, I'm a thinker, you know, where my mind is concerned. And uh, I just know how to balance the scale. You know, one thing I respect is you always have the same cool, calm demeanor. We never seen you out of character. Raise your voice even. Like it ain't never you it's like the, the level of respect that you get for I mean I can understand it because when you hear that voice, you answer the phone, oh yeah, oh shit, hang on. Oh, <laughs> fuck I didn't it, nigga. I done, but like yeah, like you said, how do you keep that demeanor? Being as though I we know that you've been through real situations that, you know what I mean, can cause you to lose your temper and all that. Do you think that you grew out of that at a certain point? from, you know, those things you had to deal with growing up in the Fifth Ward? And you oh, just... yeah. Yeah, most definitely. I've evolved, you know, from my 20s. I was a damn fool in my 20s. Didn't care about life, you know what I mean? What, you know, feel this to the extent of uh, just didn't matter. So I, I became wiser, 
You know, I'm wiser today than I was yesterday. Yeah. I see you branching out. You're getting, a, getting into the liquor business now. Yeah. I see you. Loyalty. Yeah. Okay, let's talk yeah. about it, that loyalty. Yeah, I decided to diversify my portfolio. Even um, more. Yeah, I have a loyalty collection, which consists of uh, the Merlot, the Cabernet, Champagne, Rosé. And uh, I wrapped it all around a valuable name, loyalty, because what better name to toast to in any celebration where success is concerned? You know, it has to be some loyalty in the mix. Is it it's available first? for, you know, yeah. mass consumption right now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can, uh, you can purchase it online uh, at my Instagram, J Prince Respect, and also Loyalty Wine Respect, but I have 18 wheelers traveling around the world to uh, meet the deadline December the 21st in stores. Okay. So all these years and all the liquor that came <laughs> through the hip-hop community, yeah. why now versus... Well, well, you know, my timing don't depend on everybody else's timing. You know, it's a time and a place for everything, and it's appropriate for me to do it now. You know what I mean? Now, now if, if I wanted to move accordingly to when it was inspired, Puffy, you know what I mean, tried to get me to move on it years ago, but that was his time. Right. You know what I mean? My timing is now, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Speaking of timing, you you might not even be aware this is our five year anniversary. Yeah. Just like just you think we were just yeah. talking, but just like you said, following the you know the blueprint, like you yeah. called it, five years independent, over three hundred million views, almost yeah. two million subscribers, yeah. and we dropping the show every Friday. Yeah. So just for you to stop through here and just. Yeah. Bless us with the game and the yeah, knowledge, what? you know, the presence, you know, yeah. the energy. That means that something. Means something. So much, that like means that our independent grind means something. Yeah. And that you know you what I noticed mean? it, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, to, to be on your radar, like, yeah. you have reached a level to where you, you know what I mean, you done ascended to heights that most people would never even be able to begin to think about reaching. So, like I said, to be able to be on the radar of somebody who has accomplished as much as you have, is beyond a blessing, man. And Still yeah. inspiring me to this day because right, I man. heard so many good things about the ranch. Yeah. I'm trying to get my ranch. Yeah, I can dig it. I can dig it. I appreciate, you know, the feeling is mutual. I appreciate y'all thinking enough of me to have me here. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, that's yeah, just, that's crazy. said no to that. <laughs> yeah, Jay Prince want to talk to y'all, man. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what we do? What we, yeah, what we I mean, do? Yeah, I'm straight. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I know that you had the car lot too, and Los, you know, you were into the, to the whips like, yeah, bro, so, of course, you know what I mean? of course. Like, yeah. And I see that being something that he do. So, like, what got you into that? You know what I mean? The, 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 wanting to own a car lot, not just buying them, but wanting to have one. You know that 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 car thing begun when I was like seven or eight. My cousin had like a bunch of model cars on the dresser, and I couldn't afford model cars. So every car that he had on the dresser, I used to like envision myself buying that car one day. So I purchased every car that I dreamed about. But what ultimately happened was a girl I was dating, Jazz's mother, her daddy was a, a car salesman. And I'm out there hustling, so I was looking for ways to diversify. And that's one of the uh, things that I've done was open up a car lot. Mm. That yeah. story that's in the book about the, the, the police following you through the McDonald's and all that yeah. crazy shit. That's, that shit is so crazy how yeah. you have had experiences like this and then it's like, well, fuck it, just move on. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was actually, uh, that was a DPS that stopped me for the DEA. Yeah. You know, the first time I ever been stopped and told to go to another place and stop. Yeah. See, you know that story I mean? is so crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Wild. And then, the, then the, was that the same time where they tried to throw the, uh, the, the, the Viagra pill or whatever the fuck it is? No, that was a different time. That was a different time. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, like, these, these people right here was hit men. This, this dude had eight bodies. Shoemaker. Shoemaker. Yeah. Shoemaker and Chad Scott. Well, Shoemaker, they, they kill eight people, like real dead people. And uh, they put him on me, you know what I mean? So when they was asking me to go in that dark spot that night, then why you want me to pull in the dark, right? <laughs> if a man then kill eight people and asking you to pull in the dark, what would you think? Shit. <laughs> yeah, 
shit. <laughs> Fucking bitch, they see they ain't tripping. You should have got their ass back. Now wait till your kids go trick or treat and sick Bushwick Bill on their ass. <laughs> Run up on them and take yeah. their candy. That's yeah. crazy that you that going through that though. Like you know, what I mean, most people just go at it with dudes in the streets. You really can say you then had the the government. Yeah. Yeah, you know what, what was that's what I was gonna ask you next. Like, what was what was that meet that infamous meeting about? You know, with you know, starting a bunch a new bunch of black record labels and things of that nature. Oh, the Suge and Irv got yeah, meeting. the infamous meet. Uh, you know, we was trying to create a a, a black owned distribution company, so the homies after us would have an outlet to be able to do things a little smoother. But you know, as 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 we all know, the feds hit Murder Inc. They hit death row, and you know what I mean. They attempted to take me out. So you know, and it wasn't no conspiracy where that was concerned. That was a design on hitting us simultaneously the way they did. Man, that's crazy to be able to come through all of that. Now, with all of that, you're a father. You know what I mean? And, and like you said, you know that your nut bagged and produced some niggas that's winning. <laughs> but. As a father, you know what I mean, I always, I ain't gonna say struggle, but it's its like, I always try to find the best ways to figure out the offset the time that my child loses by me yeah. being out here trying to create yeah. a legacy for her, you know yeah. what I mean? So how did you manage that back then? Well, let me say this first, I got seven kids. Everybody I hood got pregnant. Hey, yeah. 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 you know, no I more hugs. Yeah. 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 Right. We don't hug. Yeah. No Shake more. my hand. Yeah. 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 It was all women. Though. You know, it was all women. Yeah. But uh, you know, that was important to me. That was important to uh, to balance that situation. It was a situation where I could have made more money by embracing opportunities and, and, and shit like that, but. I never put any of that before that big day, that big certain, uh, big celebration that my kids was having on certain days. So even though I couldn't make it to everything, those big occasions, you know, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to let them see me. You know what I mean? I'm going to uh, make that time over money. You know, and I think uh, as a parent, we have to balance that out the best way we can. Yes, sir. Yeah. And I also saw you say that, you know, when it comes to your empire and the things that you built, you know what I mean, in the interview you did, you said, well, if I can find somebody who may not carry my bloodline that is more beneficial to continuing the legacy, then that's what I'm going to do. Like, do you, is that something you always instilled in your children growing up? Like, this shit ain't just going to be yours. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, no, I explain that to them every, every inch and yard of the way because uh, blood make you kin, loyalty to make you family. And um, I wouldn't dare, you know, put my legacy or whatnot in uh, uh, unqualified individual that then showed me why I'm alive. You're unqualified, but I'm gonna put everything in your hand because you blood and destroy it for, you know, everybody else. I can't, I can't do that. So it's deeper than blood with me. I wanna, I wanna see the proof why I'm alive. You know what I mean? That you're qualified to keep the legacy going where everybody will benefit. So that's the way I feel about that. Let me ask you this, Jay. What's the, what's the longest break you ever took from this industry? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily have to take a break because I love what I do. Right. You know what I mean? So I do everything with balance. I was able to create a lifestyle like all my life, man, when I was waking up in the morning, I hated waking up in the morning and walking to school. So my objective was to create a lifestyle where I can wake up when all the sleep is out of my head. You know what I mean? I'm just thinking this way. I, wanna, I don't want to wake up for nobody on, you know what I mean, when I want to wake up. You know, nobody so, time. Yeah, so I, you know, I created a lifestyle to uh, be able to, to live that way. So it ain't no pressure. You know, in the beginning, I will say, you know, I had to make sacrifices. I stayed up two, three, four days in a row grinding to be able to uh, live like I'm living right now. So in my 20s, you know, 30s or whatnot, I laid the foundation, I made the sacrifices to be able to live the life I live today. That's what it's all That's about. It's about. That's Setting yourself about. up. Yes, yeah. Setting yourself up for the future. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you been at this point, like, what motivates you now, like, to keep on? Because you didn't, 
I mean, you did everything that you can do. I mean, as far I'm sure you said you've accomplished all your materialistic goals, and you know you've instilled in your children what you was necessary, and they've shown that they have the ability to go out and continue the legacy. So, what motivates you to keep on pushing? Yeah, family, friends. You know what I mean. Situations like this, you know, where I'm an inspiration to others I may not have never met in my life. You know what I mean? That means something to me. It means something to me to uh, where people ain't got to hold their head down where my name is concerned. You know, where I can uplift my people. That's one of the reasons I wanted to write that book. You know, I didn't want to leave and cross over and not leave a blueprint or share, you know, my, uh, my way, my ingredients of doing things. You know, whether one use it, two use it, all of it is meaningful. So, you know, I get off on that. Mm -hmm. And I get off on just the, just the whole game. I'm competitive, so I like to win. You know, it ain't even about the money no more. It's just about the game and winning. Mm -hmm. yeah. What would you tell a brother who, like you said earlier, he might not be in the reading just yet. Why would he need to pick up this book? What do you need to, re what do you need to get from this? Yeah, well, one of the things that they say, if you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. And uh, I would say to him that, it was a book that uh, like really caused me to tap into powers that I didn't even know I had. You know what I mean? I didn't even know I had these gifts. I didn't know they was gifts. Right. I didn't even know the uh, power of prioritizing, of setting goals, of, of, of having structure. You know, I had all the, 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 the science in the world to do different things, but I didn't know how to structure it. And, in this book right here, you know what I mean, you you able to tap into my wins, my losses, everything that happened in between. And uh, you're going to see yourself on one of them pages. And I think you're going to be inspired. Now, this is the craziest shit ever, right? You know Mike Tyson and Roy Jones just had the exhibition. Mm -hmm. People don't even know you was trying to put that fight together years, years ago. ago. Yeah. When you saw that, what was your immediate reaction? You know, I was happy for him. I was happy for him because... Uh, you know, I felt like the payday, they could use it. And, uh, you know, my only hopes was that they left out of the ring the same way they came in the ring. Okay, check this out, man. People think we're just doing ads to be doing ads, but this is one that we actually use. You know how you be up late at night and you want to go to sleep, but you can't? It's this app called Calm, like calm down, calm.com. And I got the promo code where you can get up to like 40% off an exclusive membership if you go and subscribe to the app. For listeners of the show, Calm is offering a special limited time promotion of 40% off a Calm premium subscription at calm.com forward slash 85 south. They got all these meditations and calming sounds that will make you go to sleep and you can actually start getting some rest. So go use the promo code 85 south and get up to 40% off a subscription and have access to the whole library. They got stories on here and that's like they got people who read you a bedtime story in a common voice. Bro, they got Kelly Rowland on here, man. Kelly Rowland? You can actually have Kelly Rowland like talk you to sleep. You know who they should get? Tabitha Brown. But that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. Go to com.com, use my promo code, and subscribe so you can go to sleep. You know, like some ocean sounds or maybe like crickets in the grass, rain on a rooftop, ocean views. I don't know if that's the sound, but it can sound like the ocean. Thunderstorms. I like the thunderstorms for me myself personally. But yeah, make sure you go over there and meditate, go to sleep. They got music. Com.com forward slash 85 South. Use the code. But it definitely was a situation that we all met out there on my ranch like years ago. And uh, we agreed to put that very fight in play when they could have definitely been on, a, on another level. Bigger scale. Ooh. Yeah, but uh, Roy, you know, he had decided to take the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the fight with, uh, what's my man name? Uh, Ruiz? No, nah, Tarver. Oh, yeah. oh, God damn. And, uh, that night didn't go well. No, my, no. 
<laughs> that was the worst shit ever. Yeah, man. it went that pretty bad. You put me, that man. one in the book. Yeah, that, that, that ruined one. me, man. I remember yeah. seeing that shit, and then he said that shit. You got any excuses tonight, Roy? Yeah. I thought Roy passed, man. That yeah. shit was fucked up. How long you been in the? You know, a fan of the boxing game? Right. Oh man, that was my first love. That's my favorite you know sport I mean? too. That's, yeah, that, the boxing thing was. I I got distracted by the music game. You know, boxing was what I wanted, and that's why I built a boxing gym, a recreation center in my uh, community because there wasn't no gyms I can go to as a kid. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, that's what I wanted to do. So, uh, yeah, I love boxing, man. Did you ever take up the sport yourself? No, there wasn't no gym in the hood. You, you know just what I mean? Fought niggas on the street. Yeah, yeah, plenty of that. Wasn't no jail. Yeah. I'm just gonna whoop your ass in front of this yeah. liquor store, nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Plenty That's of that. crazy. Well, now, now, you know, like I said, I didn't. You know, I'm a fan of boxing. I, you know, took on the sport as a young man, and you know, the contact of it is, is beautiful when you really get into it. But who was somebody that you saw that you knew was gonna be a star that you? didn't get to work with that you wanted to mm. in the boxing game? Um, recently, uh, my man, uh, uh, what is his name from Dallas? He just fought. Just fought. Uh, God damn, I'm forgetting Sp the home and that's Spence. Spence. Earl Spence. Earl Spence, yeah. Earl Spence. You know, I, went, I, rode, I rode all the way down to, uh, to uh, the UK when he was fighting in the Olympics. You know what I mean? I wanted to... Uh, I wanted to get him, and by the time I made it there, he had already lost and bailed out. But uh, I knew he would be special when I saw him, you know, years ago. But, you know, I had a future star, or, or many of them right now, but I don't know if y'all saw Shakur Stevenson yeah, fight I know Shakur. the other yeah. night. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather on steroids. Mm. That's a hell of a statement right there. <laughs> yeah. I got crazy. another rap fan question, right? You know, you, Houston, Texas, home of DJ Screw. That's one of the, you know, that's part of the Houston culture. J Prince riding, right? Yeah. If you were listening to a screwed up song, do you have a favorite DJ Screw record or a song that you'd like to hear screwed up? Yeah, draped up and dripped out. That's your one. Oh. Yeah. Okay, I had to ask. Yeah, See, this is yeah. the type of shit like, you don't yeah, never get to ask. Get the opportunity. So what was that like when that came out? Like, cause you was already, established when, when when the screw music hit like so what was that like when you heard it the first time that was it like the way that you felt when you heard Drake like who the fuck is this shit or was yeah it yeah to a Drake? certain extent I was like what the fuck they doing you know what I mean this shit is on on drag mode or something you know I didn't I didn't understand it you know what I mean I wasn't drinking sir so I didn't understand what was happening but real quickly I I tapped into it and started, you know, I joined the movement. Mm. And then Houston's so big, man. I remember, remember the first, well, my first time going to Houston. Me and Los, we uh, had a show down there. We in uh, Fridays after the show, and there was some girls in there having a birthday party. <laughs> uh, well, uh, we thought it was a birthday party, and we walked over. They was fans, and we took pictures. We was like, what y'all got going on? Are we having a going away party? I'm like, oh yeah, where you moving to? She was like, the north side. I was like, you having a going away party where you moving in the same city? Yeah, her friends was like, we ain't never gonna we see ain't her. never gonna see her. Again. I'm like, damn. And then this was before I got a chance to actually come to Houston and see how how big the city was. You know yeah. what I mean? How big it is. And like, you from the north yeah. side, and a lot of the people that you worked with was from the south side, and it's it's known that that was a, a disconnect throughout yeah. the years. So how were you able to bridge that and make it work? Uh, well, I ain't never discriminated on, uh, on where I got money at. And, and I had the relationships prior to the music business all over the city, you know what I mean? So it was, it was something that was already taking place. I just, you know, drove through the trails that I had already blazed. And, uh, you know, I wasn't trying to hear none of that. You know, so that's the way that came about. Mm. Yeah. I'm trying to get none of that. I respect <laughs> it. Uh, continue on a break. Can you talk about how the music got signed? I know you got a big part in that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Lil Wayne and my son was on tour together. And uh, I called my son one day and I told him, I'm like, dude, I don't want you having access to this power and coming home broke. This ain't about you just being on tour 
trying to screw as many girls as you can screw. I said, go to Lil Wayne and tell him you want to do a, a joint venture record deal with him. And hit me back and let me know what he say. And he called back excited because Lil Wayne embraced the opportunity. And uh, it was then that I asked him about Drake. I said, well, who your first artist? And that's when he mentioned that name to me for the first time, Drake. And uh, he played me some Drake. And uh, I tried to discourage him about Drake. <laughs> I'm like, uh, man, you like this? Yeah, right. You about to you fuck the man. legacy up. Yeah. Prove what I told you, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get none of this shit, you fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's over for you. Yeah. And he stood on all, two, all ten, right? He said, Dad, it's the new sound. Trust me on this one. And then he used that word I had taught him since he was a little boy in the marketing meetings, the importance of a buzz. He like, he buzzing. And uh, that's when I decided to jump all the way in. And we brought Drake in. Wayne came in and uh, sent him on tour with him. I said, now take Drake on tour with you and let Lil Wayne put his arms around him on stage. And uh, that was the history. The rest was history. Still Damn. being made. Right now. I mean, arguably, you know, it's, it's going to go down when it's all said and done. If he keep on this track and on the Mount Rushmore of rap. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, yeah. and you have a hand in that, too. So it's like, do you feel like, you know what I'm saying, the accomplishment more from the things that you've accomplished or the things that your sons have accomplished? It's a combination. You know what I mean? It's a combination. It's a... Uh, it's real special to be relevant today, you know what I mean, and, and, and back then as well. So, you know, we won. You know, we won. So, uh, yeah, man, it's just been a beautiful journey. You what would what you mean? say is your biggest accomplishment if you had to pick your biggest accomplishment at this point right now? Uh, personally, it would be my kids, my family. Business-wise, it would be the foundation that I have laid where the South is concerned. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm real proud of that because, you know, I was there and I understood, you know, the things that one had to go to for this day to exist. You know, they weren't trying to give it to us. You know, that's why I say the East Coast piece of bread, West Coast piece of bread, we the meat. They can't have a sandwich without us. You know what I mean? Not, <coughs> not a real chewy one. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. Everybody got one. The whole yeah, room like, good. shit, I got one. I got one, man. What happened? Ooh, gentlemen. Ooh, <laughs> shit. Man, he right up. A lot of people don't know that the ghetto boys ain't even know each other before you put them together. Yeah. You talk about that. I, I definitely know I ate by the center. I don't know about that. Yeah. Exactly. Rest yeah. in peace. Bushwick Bill, DJ yeah, Ready Red. I had a chance to meet Bushwick, man. Yeah. Uh, real good dude, man. And he knew who he was, which was mind blowing. Yeah. And Bushwick was, he was that way in Psycho Pega. But uh, definitely, they was all strangers. Nobody knew each other. I, I shook the city inside out and tapped into the three personalities that I wanted to uh, come together as the ghetto boys. And uh, I, had a, I had a plan, because I had just got rid of the other set of ghetto boys, because they told me the subject matters that I wanted to speak on was uh, too deep. So I'm like, OK, y'all get y'all ass away from me. And, uh, I was able to tap into the others, and uh, we, you know, just like reiterated that movement that I had already started, and the rest was history. Yeah, but when you say you shook the city upside down, like, why them? Why those three? Like, what did you hear that made you know that Scarface, Willie D, and Bushwick was the combination? Because I'm going to tell you when I knew, when they made that album cover, and Bushwick had his eye I fucked up, and he was... That's the type of shit back in the day that would make you, even if you never heard of the Ghetto Boys, you pick up that shit, you want to know what the fuck was said right. on there. And how did these niggas is get this, in Because this hospital. is before makeup. Right. It's like, you know, yeah. fucking Michael Jackson shit wasn't this good. Yeah. This got to be real. Yeah, and they was rolling them through the hospitals, and they was like, fuck the doctors, nigga, we got them. And then I saying? had to get grown to figure out, damn, that was real, real, right. real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no, I knew that because of... Uh, what everybody brought to the table was something that was different and unique, you know what I mean? And uh, it wasn't a situation where they was imitating, you know, nobody. So I, you know, I respected that everybody had their own thing and I just brought that shit together and put it in the gumbo and bam, you know, turned out to be what it was. But as far as that, when Bushwick got shot in the eye, 
you know, when he uh, he say he's going to throw that girl baby out the window, you know what I mean? And he had the gun and cocked it. I, I kind of think that that gun may have went off. It didn't, she didn't quite shoot him in the eye. You know, Bushwick used to drink that Everclear. Yeah, that's you some know? strong shit. Yeah. Yeah. Straight? Yeah, straight. God Come damn, up. no wonder. I'm yeah. glad I kept that kitchen knife. That <laughs> Let me ask you this. Definitely <laughs> took my bag. It's like, yeah. See, that's the type of calls that you get when shit like that happens. So yeah. it's like, do you ever just say, man, I ain't in the mood to deal with this bullshit right now. Like, people calling your phone all night with shit like this. Yeah. You know, that shit can be stressful. Like, God, every time you answer the phone, Somebody, it's, I need you, Jay, man. Jay, I need, Jay, hey, Jay, please, man. Please, my chain, man. They got my chain. <laughs> Somebody got my chain, the man. These niggas won't let us out, man. They done locked the I got that chain, man. They got that chain, man. Please, man. Please, man. Somebody wake on up. Man. Oh, please, oh, man. Please, my chain, oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. man. Man, my bitch pregnant. Come on, huh? Come on, please. Just, I mean, I hear him, but my chain, oh, man. They got that chain. Oh, I've been calling you all goddamn night, man. Please, man. Yeah. Please, before the sun come up and these niggas get on Instagram. My chain. Don't let them know they got my chain, man. Don't let these niggas know. Uh, uh, please. <laughs> what do you do? Like that's that's a great question. That's on like, one line, then the other line, like man, please, hey, dude, done shot yourself, man. We gotta come down. That's on a whole nother line. Yeah, yeah. No, it depends on if I if I you know if I, if I fool with you or not, you know, because uh, that should be so plentiful until you can't answer all them calls or you can't even respond with all them invitations. Right. But I if you family and friends, then we're going to make something happen. How do you establish who family and friends are, though? Because I know everybody want to be your friend or family, especially when they know that you do what you do. So how do you navigate? What, you know, if you can give that out, what's your process of being able to look at somebody and say, you worthy of my time? And right. How do you, like, don't just be asking me because you know I can. Like, yeah. is this a legit, what, you know what, what I'm saying, what family trust, matter? Trust is something that's earned. You know, you don't just get that away. And, and during time, trials, and, and error, and whatnot, you're able to, you know, establish bonds with some. And then there's others that's close to people that, you know, I love. And that's, that's enough. Mm. You know what I mean? So it can be indirectly. And if, you know what I mean, you're good with family, then we're going to uh, uh, put some shit in motion. Make something happen. Yeah. Man, it's probably been so long since somebody tried this nigga. <laughs> it's been in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't had no problems of your own like that. And so you dealing with everybody else's issues. Like, how do you get to a point where, like, what, what um, do you put on those people whenever somebody has an issue or somebody call you with something? Like, is it just automatic, all right, I handle it for you? Or do you say, all right, well, what did you do? You know what I mean? Before I step yeah. in. Yeah, definitely. Uh you have to weigh out every situation, you know what I mean? I don't, I'm not the type of person that like to just jump in some shit being wrong, you know what I mean? I want to establish, you know, the whole, on all, turn that shit over all kinds of ways to see, you know what I mean? That was one of the things like with Biggie and Tupac back in the day, you know, when I was asked to mediate that situation, uh, I, uh, I, I couldn't do it you know what I mean, in a stand-up situation where I felt good about doing it because uh, it was just some things I would have done differently. Mm. Prior to it getting to that point? Yeah. Okay. You know, or even after it even happened, after he was shot. This was a lot of missing, missing shit. So if it's shit like that, then, you know, I'm wise enough to, I can't, I, ain't, I can't be no crash dummy. Right. And you've yeah. been around and been established as a respected person since through all of the eras of hip hop, right? right? Like since the 80s and 90s, and you've seen 2000s, the yeah. 2000s, the transitions, and all of these beefs and things that have gone on. So, like now with the youngins and the youngsters with this internet, which has changed the entire game, when you know, motherfuckers is just putting the phone up, yeah, bitch, look at the gun right here, I'm gonna shoot the shit out you. Like, do you even feel the need to even get involved in this type of stuff now? Because you know, the internet has changed what respect at least in my perspective, it's changed the level of respect because people aren't as influenced, influenced by what you may have laid down. They're more influenced about what them people going to say in them comments on that Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's definitely a different day. And uh, 
that's a that's the reason a whole lot of them dying because of that internet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The 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 information where power is concerned right now is this would have happened back in the day if it was like that. You know what I mean? If everybody knew where this person was that they wanted to hit or get at by punching a button, it'd have been a it'd have been a bloody mess. You know, even back then. I think so, it would have been worse back then because you I, really I agree. had to be what you said yeah, you were. I back agree. Then. Now I you agree. don't have. You just got to be surrounded by some people who do the things that you say. Yeah. Back then, I feel like, you know, just growing up in the environment I grew up in, you wasn't just able to say shit yeah. and walk yeah. around. Now nah, we yeah. gonna see. We gonna oh, see yeah. about that. So yeah. now it's like you can put insurance on yourself with the yeah. internet. So it's like, do you feel like it's something like if somebody make a call and say, "Hey, man, uh, my chain." My chain. <laughs> my chain and then they got it all on the web they talking like yeah I'm gonna do this that and the third but in the background they calling you to, to fix it do you feel like even if they family or friends you are still intervening in that or is that one of the situations where you would say nah I'm straight well it depends you know what I mean it depends you know I, uh, you know if one is campaigning for the laws and different things then y'all handle that with the laws right you know what I mean but if it's some things that's under the radar that uh, can be done without, you know, jeopardizing myself or family, then that's cool. Right. Yeah, so it's going to be done with wisdom. But being from where you're from, D.C., yeah, you, you're absolutely right. You know, D.C., <laughs> man, that was one of my hottest markets. Oh, I know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. We love yeah. to get old boy. Like I said, yeah. I seen Scarface. I worked at a barbershop. I started working when I was nine years old as a brush boy at Bluebirds Barbershop on Georgia Avenue. And then Scarface was walking up and down the avenue by himself in the 90s. I'm talking about like 98. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it, it, it blew my mind because he was a regular dude. People was coming up to him, getting him to sign autographs, and he ain't had no security. Yeah. He was just out there. So it's like the people really loved y'all in right. the city because the things that y'all was saying was yeah. really what was going on in our environment. Yeah, saying and doing. And doing, that's why right. it's, a, it's a whole gym to get shit like Art and science of respect. Are you going to keep going with the book series and yeah. expand the empire? What's the follow up? Some of the realest niggas I ever met on the planet was from DC. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got yeah, he a real nigga. Ones. I met him. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, like if, you know what I mean, with the, the art and science of respect, like he was just saying, do you feel like it's more game that you can give it's out. It's got to be. Do you feel like that's the best way to do it these days, though? Do you feel like it it could be presented in a way where the youth will get it a little Hell bit? Hell yeah, he got the audio book, too. If you don't want to read and you a hard yeah. nigga, just listen. Yeah. Shit, you can't, if you, you fucking up but if see, you don't want to read thing, or though, listen. Then you're going to do no, one or the two. Yeah, and I, and ain't no speed <laughs> read either. <laughs> no, it's, it's yeah. very it's very relaxing nah, and calm. it's relaxing, but I mean, yeah. the, the attention span of uh, now is 15 to 60 seconds. Yeah. That's the attention span. If it if it ain't in 15 to 60 second intervals, it's hard to keep some a young person's attention. You know, I got a 12-year-old daughter, and she just... You know what I mean? Dad, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah. let me figure out the last thing I looked at before you move on to the next thing. So just the way the information is consumed now, do you think that, or would you even care to change the approach and get yeah. the information out? There? Yeah, I adjust to uh, different ways of communicating all the time. You know what I mean? But I think, you know, some things like book, audio, that's going to be there forever for those who, uh, uh, you know, can embrace that. You know, like I say, everybody elevator only go up, you know, to a certain level, and you have to figure out ways, you know, how to communicate with them. Now, with me, it may be hard for me to, like, to communicate with a man as elevator stop on the second floor. You know what I mean? Because my shit... Go all the way to the top. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it, it, somebody else may have to talk to him. Yeah. <laughs> I heard you say something earlier that I want to backtrack. I don't, I don't know if you think, if I caught this, but... You were talking about the spiritual gifts and the natural abilities. Yeah. Could you speak on that? Because a lot of people are gonna hear that and they're gonna want to know more about that. Like a lot yeah. of like trusting your intuition and believing right. in yourself and things of that nature. Yeah. Well, I knew that you know seven, eight years old, some special shit was going on with me that uh, had to come from up above because uh, I was uh, able to my mind was on a different page uh, compared to the age group I was surrounding myself with. 
You know what I mean? I was gifted in a lot of areas. And, uh, you know, once I matured, I understood that, uh, you know, what my spirit, you know, that, that intuition, that discernment that, that uh, exists in me, I started, like, tapping into that and making business decisions, personal decisions based on that discernment and intuition. So I tapped into what the real power was, where that was concerned. So I nourished that relationship, you know what I mean, with my discernment, intuition, you know, my spirit-led situation versus uh, making decisions on man-made shit, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that, that made all the difference in the world uh, where my success was concerned, to be able to tap into that power that was greater than, uh, you know, all the education you can ever get. Did something happen to make you do that? Because that, that can be scary, you know what I mean? <laughs> One of the things that, you know, happen is your brain going to talk inside your brain more consistently than anything that's going to happen to you in your life. So how do you get over the fear of, man, I, I can't, just being afraid of your own energy? Yeah, it's, it's a process of uh, your relationship with the creator. You know what I mean? You know, uh, the stronger that relationship uh, is, then things make more sense to you when he's speaking inside of you. You know, to other words, to stay in darkness and to never, like, feed and nourish yourself from a spiritual point of view. You don't evolve on that level. But once you uh, are able to do that, then, you know, it's like rewards come that don't come to the average. Okay. Another one of my personal favorite moments is a video when Pimp C poured that salt on that cow's back. Was that at your uh, ranch? Yeah, yeah, that was at the ranch. <laughs> you pour, yeah. Poured the salt on the cow back. Yeah. I was like, goodness, now yeah. you own the ranch. Yeah, you got to talk about gotta that. Got to talk about that. Like, when you get to that, when you get to the level of success, whether it's it's a hundred acres or whatever your your ranch in your mind is, I feel yeah. like that's that's how you top it off. Like yeah. to me personally. Yeah. No, I definitely, I have a, a thousand plus acres. There you go. Of, of you see what I'm saying? Ooh. Yeah, like 300 head of That's a thousand and, football fields who don't know uh, what an acre is. Yeah, a <laughs> bunch of horses and different things. And uh, I tell everybody, I, I season my, my cows where they're alive. You know, I sprinkle salt on their ass and everything. <laughs> Man, that's alive. where it came from. That nigga yeah. Pimp C hit that motherfucker with the salt. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, what's up? It's your man Carlos Miller. And I know that a lot of people probably watch this show as they're laying in bed. So this is where I come in to sell you some really nice sheets, okay? So check this out. I have been all over the internet trying to find somebody who can send the sheets directly to me without charging me an arm and a leg. That's when I called the good people over there in Brooklyn and was like, y'all got some sheets over there? And they was like, yeah. Go to brooklinen.com and use promo code 85SOUTH to get 10% off your first order and free shipping. Life is too short to sleep between anything less than really nice sheets. But maybe you looked up some retailers and calculated the years of interest you pay on just one set and gave up. Trust me. Go check out Brooklinen. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com and in the promo code 85 South for your 10% off your first order plus free shipping. Don't wait. Do something nice for yourself. So use the promo code 85 South so you can get 10% off and free shipping when you go to brooklinen.com. I'm telling you, they got sheets on sheets and pillows and comforters and towels. I even got a robe. I'm telling you, they got everything over there. Brooklinen.com, Joe. Get you some nice sheets. Thousand three account. 2003 account, Egyptian cotton, double stitch, duvet cover. That's how I'm living. I'm telling you, go to brooklinen.com and go check out the duvet cover. Tell them I sent you. Use the promo code 85 South and ask about the duvet covers. Do you even know what a duvet is? That's the bottom of the bed part when you get a duvet cover. Go to uh, brooklinen.com and ask for some pillows to match your duvet covers just so you can show up and act like you know what you're talking about. Brooke Lennon. Yeah, Brooke Lennon. So, like, what made you want to do that? Like, because you had already had the car dealership and, you know, you 
multi-million dollar record label like what made you say you know what i'm gonna get a ranch and get some cattle was that a business decision or more personal get the fuck away from everybody it was a combination of both but that was a, a dream I, I started dreaming about riding to the penitentiary to visit my uncle with my grandmother you know just looking at land that's in the book you know the only time i had opportunity to get out of the hood was to ride to the penitentiary and i'm in the back seat dreaming about land and uh you know who would have known that I would bring that to fruition. That's where the seed was planted. You also have an island as well. A couple of islands. Excuse me. <laughs> a couple of islands. I don't mean to get yeah. all in your business and shit, but where they sell islands at? <laughs> <laughs> right. Like if you, if like say you came up on the paper, like where yeah. the fuck you buy an island? At? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I researched. I went and looked at islands in Nicaragua, Costa Rica, the Bahamas, Belize. You know, I researched all of them places, man. Landing on water, in the airplanes and shit. You know, looking at them islands for like a year or so before I made a decision. Yeah. Yeah. Man, what made you want to do that? I'm sure you wasn't riding on no planes and shit <laughs> to the penitentiary. You know no. What I mean? So what made you want to get an island? The, the power of tranquility. Like, I'm attracted. Like, all my spots, you know, I, I tapped into the power of having isolated spots. You know what I mean? That tranquility, that peace, and that energy you get from those spots will benefit you in your business, your everyday business decisions and shit like that. So, you know, I, I love that privacy and being able to walk around naked on my land if I want to. That's what the hell family. Jay Prince got going yeah. on. Man. <laughs> you hear me low? <laughs> walk around naked on the yeah. land. It's yours. It's yeah. yours. Shit. Kyle's probably like, let this nigga, this yeah, nigga again. Yeah, he go again. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you this. This is crazy, right? People come to you for everything and they ask you for advice about everything. Like, who the hell you get advice from? Who you listen to? Uh, I'm not saying like in that type of aspect, but I'm saying like if you know hell shit get overwhelming sometimes and you got to unload and talk to somebody and get some game back and giving yeah. out so much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a, a few friends, you know, that I, uh, like, I respect everybody's mind, and I understand that I can learn something from, from everybody. So, you know, I bounce things off of friends. You know, my old man, me and him used to really be tight. He's no longer here. You know, my mother and my father gone. So, uh, yeah, I definitely do that. Me and Hoover have an opportunity to speak a lot of times. How's he holding up? Oh, uh, solid. You know what I mean? One of the most solid individuals I ever met, and uh, we're going to be bringing him home soon. Man, that's, that's good to hear. Yeah. That's, that's good to hear right there. That's necessary. But see, on, that, as only you could. Yeah. How did, that, how did you make that connection? You know what I mean? Like, was that prior to him falling victim to the system, or, you know what I mean, did you make it afterward? No, it was after the fact. You know, Chicago is the first uh, city to embrace the ghetto boys, to embrace rap a lot. And uh, when I started traveling out there, you know, I, I told T.I. earlier, I said he subpoenaed me to come and meet with him, you know, in a, in a penitentiary. So I went and met with Larry Hoover in a penitentiary, and we had an opportunity to, like, check, you know, chop it up, and we realized that we was two like-minded individuals. And, uh, you know, that's when I decided to do that intro on the Ghetto Boys album. I said, we can't keep this to ourselves, you know, let me allow this man to have a platform where his voice could be heard. And in the midst of feds and everybody threatening me not to do that, you know what I mean, all kinds of shit kicked off around that situation. We got it done. Now, is that how you found Do or Die? Being as though you had that relationship in Chicago? Yeah, yeah, that was part of it. But I had I always had like street team members in every city around the world. You know what I mean? I had a street team uh, crew that let me know everything that started to buzz. And when that happened, I went and got do or die. Barry Wise, the owner of Jive Records, uh, I got do or die a day before he flew to uh, Chicago with a briefcase full of money. Mm. So while they in my office, we getting ready to sign, Barry Wise called them on the phone. I thought they were bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, one of them say, I think AK, it's Barry Wise on the other line. He said he got 100,000 cash for us and whatnot. 
So I said, give me that goddamn phone. <laughs> Cause, cause I'm thinking they trying to leverage and get more out of me, right? right. And that Barry Wise, you motherfucker. I said, yeah, you motherfucker. <laughs> Click. <Hung up> the <laughs> phone. <laughs> Fuck off yeah. the phone, nigga. That's yeah. what it is. Like, so. Hey, what's up, man? It's man Carlos Mill over here at the 85 South Show. Something nice. I am trapped in the studio, and I don't know how I'm going to get something to eat. You know what I do? pick up the phone and open the DoorDash app. Yeah, they bring you everything, man. DoorDash has something for every lifestyle. On the go with no time to waste, order pick up and pass the line. Delivery is more than just pizza in 2020. With a selection of your favorite flavors from across the globe, you can order world cuisine from the comfort of your living room with DoorDash. So make sure you download the app and use promo code 85 South so you can get $5 off your first order of $15 or more. That's promo code 85 South. You've got big plans for 2020, but when will you find time to do it all? Order delivery with DoorDash and take back time in your day. We use it. We want you to use it. That's why we're giving you the promo code. And for the people who don't know what a promo code is, it's kind of like a coupon before the internet. So if you go in there and they say enter the promo code, always enter 85 South so you can get the best deal possible. With door-to-door -door delivery in all 50 states, Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can order from your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, and the Cheesecake Factory. Get the app. Go to the app store and get the app. You don't have it yet? While we still talk, I got food on the way. What were you saying, bro? Go to commercial. You know, I don't know if a lot of people know that, you know, do or die. If you Even if y'all know who do or die is, if you don't, do the research. But, like, was that the first non-Southern act that you... Sign? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so, but it definitely was the first Midwest artist that I had signed. Man, okay. Man, yeah, yeah, West Coast. Yeah, that was West Coast. Rolling 60 homies. CJ Mack, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. CJ Mack, yeah. I know about CJ Mack. Dude, uh, KF Mack videos, did an interview with him, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. And now, you know, that's one of my favorite groups. You know, this, the Midwest music influenced me heavily growing up, too. So did you have a say in the content that they was putting out, or you was just like, you know what, y'all do y'all thing. I'm going to give y'all the freedom to do what you do. Yeah. Yeah, I just roll with the flow. You know what I mean? At the time, that was Twister and all of them oh, was yeah. doing their thing together. So, shit, I roll with the flow. Man. Let me ask you this. What... um. Like, what do you feel like is missing from the music game on the outside, on the black side of the culture right now? We got so many outsiders, you know, being the influence. What do you feel like needs to happen for that to, for that wave to come back? Uh, the whole creative control like it was. I think it would be a beautiful sight to see um, a lot of these guys unite their power and, uh, you know, bag up from, uh, you know, a lot of this foolishness that don't mean nothing. You know, I would like to see uh, structure in the game to the extent where they would unite that power uh, a little more than, than I'm witnessing right now because it's almost like they becoming prey. You know, the rap game right now is a dangerous business. Vicious cycle. You what? know, <clears throat> and uh, the only w they have to put more protection on their ass, you know what I mean, just value their whole movement more because there's a lot of weaknesses that, you know, people are going to take advantage of. You have to understand that, you know, when you leave your house, your objective should be to make it home safe. And in order to do that, you have to put different things in place where that happen every day. Yeah. Right. Something Scarface said, we in this shit so we stay true. And since we bang them, we do what OG say do. Yeah. What do you think or could you give advice to youngers about the importance of listening to your OGs. I mean, not just somebody who is saying they're OG because they older than you, or somebody that is trying to put a gun in your hand and nothing like that, but somebody who's really trying to help. Yeah. Where how do they decipher who to be respected, who is to be respected, and who is to be neglected? Um, you know, you you decipher that by by truth if you recognize what truth is. You know what I mean? It ain't about listening to somebody with more money over somebody with less money. It's about listening to truth, listening to realness. 
and it's a thing that's called a track record that one can tap into to see, you know what I mean, how this OG have lived or what is it, you know what I mean, what happened with him. You know what I mean? That would be one of the first things that I would want to do is, you know, check that track record out. But it's so powerful to be able to, to embrace wisdom and to learn from somebody else's mistakes versus, uh, you know, you having a trial and error, you know, have to stick your hand in, in fire to uh, get burned or bleed at his hot, you know. So that would be my advice to them, man. Tap into some wisdom because, you know, when you live a certain length of time, you, you learn some shit. Exactly. You know? <clears throat> And that's what I'm saying, man. That we could never, we could never replace or repay you for the time that you have spent here today. We could literally sit here and ask you this shit all day, man. And it's just, just know that you're one of the people that we've always looked up to and modeled our business after. And we wanted to get the chance to give you the flowers while we still could. You know what I'm saying? So this, sitting here with you and just being able to ask you these questions, you know, from you know, listening to all these rap a lot hits, because that's what we do. Just you know, paying respect to the OGs. We really do love old school music. And then it's like, for you to be here, right here, it's, unreal, it's just man. unreal. You unreal. get what I'm saying? Because so Because you grew up watching and listening to this voice. <laughs> you know what I mean? And at, at a certain point, this voice was just a voice. And it was, you know, so light years away from your reality. Yeah. Right. And then, you, you know, for us to get to a point where our reality has been able to smash into that voice yeah. and have it sitting right next to us and talking to us is something that you know for anybody watching this right. man it's possible like yeah. anything is possible because i know growing up where i grew up and listening to all of the stuff that y'all put down like i i would be lying like you said i would be lying if i said that oh yeah one day i'm going but to get to a point where it happens it's it's just it's the greatest feeling in the world, man. Right. So thank you. And then being. it's like a, just being in our own industry with the entertainment and the comedy and then this media. You know, we turned down a lot of shit just to stay independent. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, it's stamped in us. And you yeah. showed us the value of being independent and what longevity does when you are independent. So man. thank you for yes. that, just for that lesson. Right. If yeah. nothing man. else, you're that, that's yeah. what we learned exactly. just by following your blueprint. Being able to know that what's yours is yours and what, 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 everything else don't matter. Yeah. You only need to get yours. Like you say, let your let you yes mean yes and your no mean no. And everything that's for you will be for you and anything else you don't need to worry about. Man. Exactly. And to you all know? the people who watch this show and they ask us who we who we respect and who we get game from, it's one of those right here. Right here. Right here. All the way. If there's anything you want to say in closing and get us out of here with promo with give me one. Let me hold one. Yeah, yeah. I take the wine. Man, give yeah. me the give me this one. I take the wine. Yeah. Lord, and yeah. then it got a crown on it and everything. Yeah. Yeah, let's, right here. let's celebrate that word. Let's celebrate that with a toast of loyalty, you know, in the coming holidays and for a lifetime. Let's make it a, a lifestyle, you know what I mean, where we celebrate loyalty with everything we do because that's what it takes, you know, to be successful. We have to connect ourselves with some loyalty. Well, we get the first, we get the ass. What, what Rap A Lot Records got coming for 2021? Well, you know, Brazy, for example, you know, we, okay. we're cooking up on Brazy okay. right oh, that's now. Dope. Okay. Yeah. That, that's what it is. Yeah, Brazy with the family, and uh, we're going to make some things happen with Brazy. Get him out the street, man. Yeah, yeah please. Please bro. get him out the street. Only man I know that took 10 bullets and still alive. Yeah. 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 yeah he that man was in jail with his own daddy. He <laughs> yeah. was like, man, yeah, I shot my cousin. He was like, like on accident? No, nah, nah, like, like on, on purpose. purpose. <laughs> oh, that couldn't have been his first cousin. They, that it had to be like his third cousin. You do too much shit with your first cousin. You could just fight that nigga, god damn. Yeah. But yeah, man, I'm definitely a fan of Slim Music. We got to get the movie, too. Who, when the movie coming out? Oh, man, you know, I, I was, uh, I just heard that Denzel Washington's son uh, wanted to play me, so. I was uh, excited to hear that, so we're gonna we're gonna be moving forward on that song. I'm like, yeah, yeah. put Pimp C in it. I want to play him. I yeah. audition. I'm, I got it. <laughs> Trust me.
You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it is. But yeah, that, man, thank you, man. This is yeah. this is beautiful. Good, we get to keep this. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah, keep all up, <laughs> making sure. You know, yeah. Just, oh, I definitely. I got I, some books too. So. Well, look, that's exactly what I was about to get. I at. Like I do have a book. copy of the book, and I have the audio book. I want. I need. A, I gotta have a signed copy oh, of the book. I got you. And if you if you ever need anything from the '85 South show, you don't never have to say it two times. I bet you that. Yeah, it is. No, sir. No courtesy call necessary. We got it. Lord, you see him first, yeah. folks. 85 yeah. South Show, legendary episode. Jay Prince, Rap a Lot Records, yeah. all of that. I'm Carlos Miller. I'm Chico yeah. Bean. And I'm you Jay know Prince, Mark Tide. <laughs> Come on, let's get it. You did. Yeah. God damn, boy. Yeah.